Story 1. So, I had been with Ben for 18 years before I'd finally had enough and asked for a divorce. He moved several hours away near his mom. This also meant he left me to raise our kids by myself with little child support and never seeing the kids. I decided it was time to have a family portrait done as it had been a while. We went and had a sitting. As we were looking through the digital images to pick out what to order, my oldest asked if we could send one to Grandma, his mother. I told her that I didn't think Grandma would want a picture with me in it, but I would be happy to order her a picture of just the kids. My oldest swore Grandma would want me in the pictures and always made sure to ask about me and how I was doing. I heard from Ben's best friend that he hated the fact his mom told him he messed up the best thing that ever happened to him and that she still remained friends with me on social media. I was kind of surprised. My ex was extremely verbally and emotionally abusive to me during our marriage, which is why I ended it. I never knew his mom actually thought so highly of me. I only ever saw her a couple of days a year at Christmas. No issues. We just never grew close. So, my oldest calls up Grandma right there in the studio and asks her if she'd want a picture with me in it or with just the kids. Grandma asked specifically for a picture with all of us, including me. So, I decided to order her a nice glossy 8x10 that I had matted and framed and mailed that to her. Apparently, she hung it right in the entryway, where every time my ex walks in, he sees my smiling face staring back at him. I just wish I could have seen the expression on his face the first time he saw it. Story 2 My father is the Canadian Satan. Growing up with him was less than fun and I can assure you, based on witnessing it, he was a less than fun husband. I'd go on about what a piece of garbage my father is but instead I'll quote a judge. You're the most despicable human I've ever had in my courtroom, and that's coming from a family court judge. I read this winning endorsement of my dad's personality in the court documents I acquired related to his divorce from my mom, the same place I discovered the crazy stuff he had engaged in to steal from my mom. It's also where I found the information I needed to get one over on him so severely he's going to disinherit me. A frame of reference about my father is that he's a pathological narcissist and behaves exactly how those people are compelled to act. They aren't generous people, and hitting them in the wallet is like a slap shot to the lower regions from Gretzky. He's kind of like Donkey from Shrek, but also Joseph Stalin, a monstrous jerk. Chapter 1. Those that sow the wind shall reap a whirlwind. Our actions always have consequences, and my padre has plenty to answer for. My attempts to hold him to account didn't jump to immediate war. They started with diplomacy and a therapist. About 10 months ago, when our tale began, I was going through some stuff. Stuff being a whole lot of PTSD related to both my dad's abuse and my job as a paramedic. He did a ton that affected me deeply, things that I needed to move past, along with all that other drama from 15 years of emergency medical service. In trying to move past and work through everything, I quit drinking, started turning my untreated PTSD into treated PTSD, and thought having my dad involved might help me and our relationship. Well, I seriously misjudged that one, so you'll probably be unsurprised to hear that conversation went swimmingly. I'll spare you the lurid detail, but when I broached the subject with him, our back and forth degenerated into visceral hate with him screaming at me that I'm a failed paramedic, liar, and useless alcoholic. While I have a certain pride about my job, I have more pride in my 14 months of sobriety, so hearing this from my old man might have caused me to behave a bit irrationally. I got really upset at him and decided to dig up every bit of dirt I could, see what kind of man he actually is and has been. When it was convenient, I hopped in the mystery machine before taking a trip to the courthouse to unleash my inner detective. Everything is public record, so I bulk bought copies before retiring to my easy chair to read, plot, and pet my white long-haired cat. For good measure, I obtained a file of divorce documents from my mother. Soon enough, I hit upon a line of inquiry worth following up on. It seems that during the final settlement of my parents' divorce 2002, my mother was awarded one-third of my father's employment pension. She was a stay-at-home mother and could not earn one herself, so it was given to her by a judge. Mighty strange because my father, as he brags, took a nearly full pension and retired a bit early. No way the jerk was living the last 10 years after retiring early on a two-thirds pension. He isn't constantly whining about it. So I asked my mother if she was collecting a pension from his job or had cashed out the value 100 k plus at the time 20 years ago? No to both questions. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if that's collectible and what 20 years of compound interest from a pension fund makes it worth. 
Well, I did eventually find out along with the fact that my dear old dad had been collecting my mother's portion for 10 years, in open violation of a legal order from a judge. Why didn't my mother pursue this sooner? A combination of being unable to afford a lawyer, being his victim for 20 years, and pessimism after so much of his continued dodging obligation to the order, she just quit. There is effectively no statute of limitations he could hide behind because of the wording of the settlement. Insofar as I could tell, I had him dead to rights, and my mother would be collecting. It would be a slam dunk. I just needed to hire a lawyer to help me. So I set out to find the most unbalanced, bloodthirsty psychotic who passed the bar exam. Chapter 2 As it says in the good book, treat others as they would treat you. So that's what I set out to do. The misanthropic sociopath I hired for legal counsel suggested we send a demand letter to the pension office to try and remedy it before filing what would undoubtedly be an easy win for him. I agreed in spirit and instead phoned up the pension office and got put through to the woman managing my father's file. Well, she was a delight, and it was a trivial matter for me to get her to loathe my dad. We talked for 45 minutes, and I swear if you'd given me another hour, I could have convinced her to cause him serious trouble. In all our conversations about life, families, and relationships, we got down to some things of note. Since I could show her correspondence her office had sent to my father CC'd my mum on some years ago and ongoing for five consecutive years, trying to resolve this matter, which he had ignored, she was more than willing to start the process of remedy immediately. Full cooperation from this lady and her office was a matter of merely providing documentation. And with my lawyer on retainer, this office was beyond asking my father to comply. They complied for him. About two months since I last spoke to my father, he now had no idea his pension was about to take a serious hit. Below, I'm going to break down how big a problem I put into his bowl of ice cream. My mother's portion was made whole and adjusted to reflect that her portion was brought to maturity and beyond so his early retirement doesn't affect her fund. So he loses 10 years of valuation to her. He also retires three years early, which knocks him down now to 17 years of pension valuation not 27. If you'd forgotten, my dad had been collecting my mom's money and was overpaid by 30k per year for the last 10 years. Like I said, mom was made whole, so the pension company is going to claw back that overpayment from the base valuation of his current pension fund. I'm not exactly sure what that does to the number, but it effectively reduces my old man's private retirement fund. He's got a government old age pension that he took early too. Whoops. My dad did some awful stuff to me but I only had to suffer 17 years of him. My mom still has the high score at 20. As much as I did this for spite and malicious glee, I did do it to give my mom a chance at a proper retirement. Chapter 3 Glitter Bombs of Justice My mother started collecting her pension about three months after I contacted the pension office, and to celebrate, she bought tickets to New Zealand for the family for Christmas, so we can see our relatives. I was able to get most of my retainer from the lawyer back, and to celebrate, I went online to order a glitter bomb. I was able to ship it to my old man anonymously from another country. I heard through my sister he opened it up in his stupid red Maeda. Ha ha ha. He'll never get rid of it. Story 3 I've had a rough past two years. I was living in British Columbia and got my girlfriend, now fiancé, pregnant. And we had a beautiful little boy. I had to go back to the States because I overstayed my visa and was given trouble at the border when I tried to go back. My fiancé couldn't leave the baby, and he was too small to travel, so we waited a few months and decided to get my permanent residency. Her cousin knew a lawyer and recommended her, thinking this would be the solution. The nightmare begins. We forked over $6,000 and began the process. Months of paperwork going back and forth and all the usual hoops you jump through. Coming to the end of it, the lawyer forgot to get a few key papers, like sponsorship paperwork and minor other things. I thought, okay, this isn't a big deal. We can get this all turned in and get back on track. The first red flag hit me when she started talking about crossing the border illegally and how if I did that, it wouldn't be a big deal and I could be with my family. I had to tell my lawyer that was not a good idea. Fast forward a month later and my paperwork finally cleared the consulate in Seattle and was en route to my home. I got a phone call from my crying fiancé when it hadn't shown up when we expected and she called to find out why. She tells me the lawyer called the consulate and said that I wanted the address changed to my fiancé in British Columbia and to send it there. I immediately called her and said I didn't approve of this and that she lied to the consulate, who we promptly informed. 
She then proceeds to tell me that I need to sneak across the border illegally and get it from my fiancé, and that everything will be fine since my packet has my permanent residency card and number. I was speechless and explained to her my issues. This is illegal. What about all the stuff I have to move? Why did you do something without my consent that wasn't necessary? Won't this get me in trouble? She honestly had no good points and messed up with her words. My fiancé and I contacted the firm after and told them everything. Apparently, she got three people banned from Canada by doing what she tried to with us and was on probation of sorts with the firm. Later that day, we got a call from them informing us that she had been fired and they would be following up to get her disbarred. We explained everything to the consulate as well. Judging by the actions the firm made in compensating our whole case, something must have been said in conversation with the consulate. So, we got my permanent residency for free, got our lawyer fired and later disbarred from law practice, and our family is happily together, currently planning the wedding. I also found out later she actually went to jail for negligence and some other charges. I didn't let the lawyer cheat me, and she hung herself. I just gave her the rope. Oh, I should mention that the cases she worked where the three people got banned were overturned due to her incompetence. For those asking, the Prime Minister of Canada has changed laws making it possible to mail permanent residency cards outside of Canada. Story 4 About a year ago, I filed a housing discrimination complaint against the Homeowners Association of the condo building in which I was a renter. They claimed that my assistant's animal dog counted as a pet for their one-pet policy and prevented me from getting an ordinary pet cat. The dog is an emotional support animal who is a significant aid for my partner's mental disability. We filed a discrimination complaint with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development alleging discrimination by not allowing us a regular pet as any non-disabled resident would be allowed to do. Fast forward, and today I heard back from my state's civil rights agency that they are compelling the homeowners association to 1. Pay us several thousand dollars in damages. 2. Update their pet policy to explicitly state assistance animals don't count as pets. 3. Proactively inform all residents of the law and post it in common areas. 4. The homeowners association board and property managers must go through fair housing training. 5. The agency will monitor the Homeowners Association for compliance. It feels great to win after so many months of stress and fighting. While vindicating, this all could have been avoided if the petty individuals on the board would have just read all the legal documents and policies I sent them at the start. But I guess the sorts of people who run for Homeowners Association office need to learn lessons the hard way.